should chemical engineers get their professional engineering license? In today's episode of Pass the PE Exam, I have with me Tina Heap. Tina is a chemical engineer, she's a licensed professional engineer, and she's a senior technical client manager at TM Associates. And Tina's going to talk about why chemical engineers should get their license and why she's ecstatic that she got her license because a lot of chemical engineers don't think it's necessary for career growth. Before we jump in, I want to recognize our sponsor for today's episode, PPI Kaplan, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. So my guest today on Pass the PE Exam is Tina Heath from TNM Associates, and Tina is a licensed professional engineer, chemical engineer by background. Tina, thanks for a few minutes here. I wanted to talk to you because I'm a civil engineer. Um, went to college; they basically forced us to take the FE exam <laughs> senior yeah. year. And a lot of my friends that were chemical engineers, ah, I don't need to get my license. Mm-hmm. Chemical engineers don't need it, and so. I figured I had the opportunity to talk to you. You're a chemical engineer. You're a licensed professional engineer. Take us inside your career and the decision to get licensed for you as a starting point. When I went through college, I left college with the same attitude. I don't need the PE. What is that going to do for me? And uh, after going and spending so many years in the refinery, I fit it. Some of my work in the refinery wasn't as technical. They had me rotating. I was going through and doing gasoline blending. I was the gasoline blender for mobile oil for all of California, Nevada, and Arizona at one point. And it just didn't satisfy this nerdiness of in me. So I <laughs> went ahead and I got my PE. And what I found, and I'm very thankful that I have, is that on resumes, on business cards, that PE says she's serious, right? She tries to know her stuff. And I think chemical engineers need that. I mean, all engineers should be, and they're, we're all serious because we're all nerdy and crazy. But to have those, those two letters gives like the first impression, right? When you hand somebody your business card, that's the first impression and they're like, okay, she's a serious engineer. And I think all chemical engineers should take the exam. It was, and of course, as everything, uh, as you were mentioning for a civil, the closer to graduation, a bit better than in the middle of, you know, sure. 10 years, 15 years down, you're going to have to do some vector analysis. And granted, learning vector algebra was a lot easier the second time than the first, but still, you know, you had to kind of, you know, exercise those muscles again. So to do the test earlier versus later is the right thing to do. It presents yourself as the professional, even though it's just only those two letters. They're important. No, for sure. And, you know, one of the things that I also tell people, which I think you're an example of is you don't know where your career is going to go. So you're exactly. in the refinery and now you're working at T&M Associates doing consulting work. Right. And to me, you know, I think in consulting even more like that PE license is super critical. So, yes. you know, and I imagine when you started your career, you had no idea. No, none at all. I was going to be in the refinery my whole life. Right. <laughs> well, 13 years. It wasn't a, it wasn't a short stint, but, uh, but you can never tell. You can never tell where you're going to end up. And do you feel like at T&M and the work that you do, your license is also still really valuable? It is because I've done uh, many projects basically stamping the SPCC prize. So this is oil pollution prevention plan okay. that requires a stamp and requires a PE stamp. And as a chemical PE, I was able to help the client and, and the company, of course. Oh, that's yeah. great. 
And I do think that's so important. And I also have friends that maybe were in construction that want to go into construction as civil engineers and they didn't get their license figuring out I'm going to be on the construction side of it. But again, right. in 10 years, you might not be on the construction side of it, right? You could easily go work for a, a firm or a public entity where you need that license. And really, I think going back to what Tina said at the beginning of this is it's only two letters, but it's an important two letters. It's important. And when they're after your name, it's an immediate credibility factor. It's an immediate, oh, wow, this person's licensed. Right. And when you're sitting across the table from a client or you're when you're presenting to a client and you're they're judging you and your firm yeah. on whether they want to hire you, right? All yeah. of these things come into play. And I can tell you, I worked for a consulting firm and I used to interview recent graduates. And the, one of the first things we looked through on the resume is did they take the EIT? Or are they on track for their license? Right. right? It, it, like, yeah. it tells you something about that person in terms of their work ethic, their goals, their aspirations, where they want to go in their career. So- I'm glad I had a few minutes with Tina because we don't get a lot of chemical engineers on the show. And ah, I do talk to chemical engineers that should say- do more. <laughs> yeah, well, we should. It's hard to find chemical engineers that have their PE license. That's, ah. that's the challenge. And so if you are a chemical engineer, I hope you found this video. I hope you're listening. And I hope that you'll consider getting your license because you don't know what you're going to be doing 5, 10, 15 years from now, just like Tina didn't. But for her, it worked out great that she was able to get her license, gave her the credibility boost, and she's also using it to sign and seal documents yes. now. So Tina, thank you for a few minutes and sharing you're your welcome. PE experience with us. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Pass the PE Exam. If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe to our channel here. We'll continue to put out videos weekly to help you pass the PE exam. And please, I ask you to leave questions and comments below this video. Maybe there's a specific problem you're dealing with around the exam or an issue that you've run into in registering or trying to prepare for the exam. Leave your comments and questions below. We will review them and answer them. And I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.